stock valuation. We saw that in order to prepare the income statement of a firm over an accounting cycle, we must compute the exact cost of goods sold, corresponding to the sales. Usually, the cost of goods sold is not equal to the purchases of the cycle. We may have purchased less than we sold, but we depleted a bit the stock, or we may have purchased more than what we sold, and we increased the stock. The formula is COGS equal opening stocks plus purchases during the cycle minus closing stocks at the end of the cycle. Another way to write the same formula is purchases minus delta stock. Delta means variation, that is closing stocks minus opening stocks. So far in the example we presented, life was simple. Here was the journal, and next to it, I put a page called, that I called inventory monitoring that kept track of what was going on with the, the final inventory, the ongoing final inventory. The main objective of this page was to compute the final stocks at the end of the cycle. And the figure was very simple to compute. It was the number of items remaining in stocks multiplied by the purchasing price of each item, 40. So that was 3,000 and 600 euros. Life was simple because the purchasing price of all the items was always the same, 40 euros. So the calculation of the ongoing uh, remaining stocks posed no problem and the final remaining stocks was easy to compute. But if the purchasing price of items vary over time, we have to know which ones we sold and which ones remain. Sometimes it's more an accounting decision than an observation, in fact. Think of the case when we purchase oil going into a tank before we sell it to decide which barrel of oil was actually sold and which one remained in the tank is a bit specious. The three main methods to keep track of COGS and remaining stocks are called FIFO for first in, first out, LIFO for last in, first out, and CWA for continuous weighted average. The idea is very simple. Suppose that on November the 6th, I buy one teddy bear at 5 euros the teddy bear. That's the purchasing price and this teddy bear goes into my stock. Then before any sale, uh, I buy another teddy bear on November the 7th. Before any sale, I buy a second identical teddy bear to the first one, but that one I, I purchase at 6.5 euros. The purchasing price of teddy bears, like anything else, vary over time. Then on November the 8th, I sell one teddy bear at 10 euros, but this selling price plays no role in the stock valuation. The question is very simple. What is the cost of goods sold? I sold one of these teddy bears. What was its cost? Well, if I use the FIFO method, first in, first out, well, it's the first teddy bear that entered my stock, which is sold first. So using the FIFO method, the cost was 5 euros. The LIFO method says we first of all sell the last in. Well, in that case, the last teddy bear in cost 6.5 euros. And the CWA, continuous weighted average method, computes an ongoing uh, average price of what I have in stocks. In that case, the teddy bear I sold was the average price of teddy bears. That's 5.75 euros. To monitor a stock or a storeroom, the usual sheet is slightly more elaborate than what we presented so far. Here is a more elaborate form for the storeroom sheet. It has a column date, then three columns for purchases, the number of items, the price per item, and therefore the value of the purchase, a column for sale, just the number of items sold, 
because in the stock valuation we don't care about the selling price and we keep uh, we finish up with a being stock number of items value ending stocks number of item value so let's treat our example uh, that I presented before and we shall purchase the items at two different prices so suppose that uh, first in our first batch of items we purchase them at 40 euros per item that was on January the 12th we purchase 100 items at 40 euros a piece value of this purchase 4000 euros no sales no beginning stocks because it was the first uh, accounting cycle ending stocks 100 items for the value of the ending stocks for us 4000 euros let's continue and uh, we shall use in the in the subsequent uh, slides the lifo method so on the 18th of january we sell 30 items in fact here life or five or whatever will not make any difference so what happens the beginning stock is just this number the beginning value of stocks is just this number and at the end of this sale the ending stock the ongoing um, ending stock is 70 and the ongoing value of uh, the ending stock is 2800 euros that is 70 multiplied by 40. LIFO method, I continue, I purchase some more items on the 26th of January, 60 more items, but this time the purchasing price is 42, value this, beginning stock it was that, and therefore this value, ending stock, well it is 70 plus 60, 130, and the value of the ending stock is 5320. That is the sum of 70 items multiplied by 40 plus 60 items multiplied by 42. Then I sell some items. I sell 30 items on January the 26th as well. Well, here the, the method we use matters. And we use the LIFO method. That is, we assume that we are selling the most recent items in our stocks. So the stock goes down from 130 to 100 and the value of it, we deplete the most recent ones. We deplete the figure that here was 60. Let's look at it. It was 60 and now it goes to 30. So the ending stock value is 4060. And on the 27th, we sell another 10. And again, we use the LIFO method. So we deplete as much as we can the most recent items. So the 30 goes to 20 and the final stock value is 3,640. Finally, at the end of the accounting cycle, the calculations are the complete purchases was 6,520. There you can obtain that. The sum of all these purchases is 6,520 euros. The opening stocks was zero because we are the first accounting cycle. The closing stocks we just computed. It is 3,640. So closing stocks that figure and therefore the COGS is 2,880 euros. And this figure can go into the IS either directly or with the usual formula, opening stocks, purchases, and closing stocks in credit.